Welcome to our discussions in accounting. This is Professor Ramana. Uh, we will discuss today on uh, the cash flow statement and particularly the cash flow from operations. Uh, in India, the, the relevant accounting standard for preparing the cash flow statement is accounting standard 3. And accounting standard 3 says that uh, you have to show cash from operation, uh, cash from investment activities, and cash from financing activities um, instead of just showing the receipts and payment. But our focus of our discussion is on the cash from operating activities or CFO. Uh, why CFO? In a, as we move along, we will try to understand the importance of CFO. The cash from operation, as per accounting standard 3, can be, com can be determined by using a direct method or indirect method. In case of direct method, we try to find the receipts and payment from the operation. So therefore, it's a cash sales plus collections uh, from the customers from the customers okay from customers or debtors and less payment to the creditors or purchases expenses paid and the taxes paid in India we take uh, the taxes as a part of operating activity uh, but if you see the indirect method it tries to uh, it tries to answer a question why the profit after tax is not same as CFO so therefore, it says the profit after tax is not same as CFO because of non-cash items, because of non-operating items, and because of the credit items. So therefore, under indirect method, the profit after the cash from operation can be determined by making adjustments to the profit after tax, adjustments for non-cash items like depreciation, amortization, non-operating items like interest paid or interest received, dividend received, and credit items like the changes in debtors, changes in creditor, and changes in a stock. Or in other words, the changes in operating working capital. Now, this particular understanding of direct and indirect method, we will we'll try to do that with an example. Okay, so uh, let me remove these items for the time being so that we will, as we move along, we will understand that. I'm just removing it. Okay, so I'm just removing that so that you will appreciate. So the balance sheet of the company is given. The income statement is given. We have seen in the past that when a set of transactions are given, you can prepare income statement, cash flow statement, and uh, the... Um, and uh, the balance sheet so so therefore if i if i say that this is the cash flow statement which shows opening cash sales and the creditor and other expenses but as i mentioned we are we are focusing attention only on the cash from operation so i'm not preparing here other uh, other cash um, that is cash from investment or operation so in a direct method i'll just pick up the sales because there is no other cash flow you can see here. Payment for the creditor. So maybe I can write down here creditors. That's not a big problem. Creditor. And uh, the other payment relating to the operation is the operating expenses paid here, 44. The research expenses, I'm assuming that to be an investment. Interest is a non-operating. And the tax is 50. So therefore, the cash from operation is the sales minus creditor minus OPEX minus the tax. So this is an indirect, it's an indirect method. In case of an indirect method, we start with the PAT. So what is a PAT here? The profit after tax of the company is 120. Add to that non-cash items like depreciation, non-operating items like Research, in this case we have assumed the R&D to be an investment activity, non-operating items like interest, okay? Because they have been deducted while computing the income statement or in the income statement, we are adding it back. And the changes in working capital can be seen from the balance sheet, from the balance sheet. So if you see the changes in working capital, you have to see creditor, stock, and the debtor. So the debtors, if you see the debtors, 
in this case there is no change in the data there is no change in the stock there is no change in the stock okay whatever stock was there is there and there is no change in the creditor so so therefore the in indirect method also the cash from operation is 516 so that means the cash from operation in a direct method tells us what are the operating inflows and outflows whereas the, the CFO indirect methods will tell us why is a profit after tax not same as not same as CFO but in both the cases CFO whether direct or indirect is 516 but in this example we have assumed that uh, or rather the question says that there is no changes in a debtor or stock or the creditor but slowly we move along and pick up one by one if there is a change and see understand the effect on the CFO for example let me take another situation so once again let me remove this CFO let me remove this CFO so let me show the similarity between that. Here also there is PAT of 120. Let me reduce this, minimize this. So there is 120 PAT. And uh, here also the PAT is 120. But you see the observe the impact on the CFO. But in order to understand that, let us once again see the sales 200. The money paid to the creditor is 340 the operating expenses and the tax paid is 50 so there is a negative 234 first let us find out indirect then we will we will try to reconcile and understand so the pat of the company is 120 once again I add back the depreciation depreciation add back the research and development add back interest because it's a non-operating is a financing now observe the data the data has actually increased what does it mean when I say debtors have increased that means the business has actually sold the goods on credit and no change in the stock no change in the stock and no change in the creditor okay no change in the creditor but this business has actually sold the goods on credit so despite the fact that they have the same PAT here, the CFO is 516, but in this case the PAT is same, 120, but the CFO is minus, CFO is minus 234 minus, so let me make it uh, color red, so it is CFO is minus 300, 234. Why it is minus? Because a large percentage of the sales is on credit. So that is why increase in data is because of the credit sales. So with the same pad, you have a huge negative CFO. Now let us see another situation where I have the creditors. Okay, so again I remove, I am using the same numbers just to drive in the importance of the to observe the effect of specific decisions so what happened here the sales is 950 the money paid to the creditor I've not paid anything to the creditor I paid operating expenses and I'm paying taxes so there is a huge positive CFO why huge positive CFO in this case with the same pat we'll try to answer that by taking the PAT and the PAT is 120 depreciation is 100 research and development is 200 research and development is 200 interest is a non-operating I add back but if you see the debtors here okay the debtors no change in the data so therefore zero no change in the stock therefore zero but what happened to the creditor the creditors have increased significantly that means I've, I'm purchasing the goods on credit so you see there is a huge CFO positive let us go back and see CFO was 516 
with the same pad. CFO with the same pad 120 is a negative because you are selling the goods on credit. But here you have the same profit but you have a huge positive CFO because you are postponing the payments. So in this case I am postponing postponing payments. Okay? I am postponing the payments or creating a current liability. Whereas in the previous case I'm postponing, postponing, okay, I'm postponing uh, the receipts, okay, I'm postponing the receipts. So creating a current assets, okay, I'm creating current assets, yeah. So in this case, we assume the stock and credit has no change. In the previous case, we changed the debtor, uh, creditor. Uh, in this case, we changed the uh, creditor. Now let us see what will happen if the stock will change. I'm not changing, that means I'm purchasing more during the current period. With the same pad, okay, observe what I'm doing. So sales, purchases, payment towards the creditor, operating expenses 44 and tax 96, okay, yeah, so tax is 50, so minus 154, 144, because you, you paid uh, huge uh, use money towards the acquisition of stock. But why there is such a negative cash flow when there is the same pad? Let us do the indirect method. So in indirect method, once again to reiterate, depreciation, I add back R&D, assuming it's an investment, add back interest, assuming it's in financing, no change in the debtors, okay, no change in the debtor. And if you see stock, there is a huge increase in the stock, minus 660. That means you purchase huge amount of stock for cash. And there is no change in the creditor. That means you purchase the most of the stock for cash, so 144. So once again, here you are acquiring, okay? You are using cash, using cash to buy stock for future so therefore presently i don't have i don't have enough cash sitting on my in the previous case you're postponing the payment creating creditor current liabilities or creditor so therefore you have a positive cfo in this case in in this case you're postponing the receipts so creating that means you're going to collect in future so therefore with the same pad we saw with the same pad we saw the cfo from 516 to minus 234 to plus 856 and the stock uh, when there is a change in the stock as minus 144 and if I put them all of them together which we call the changes in working capital so in that case so let me remove this once again and uh, do it for you once so in this case we have the sales 500 Okay, stock or payment to the creditor and operating expense and the tax paid 50, so 106. So PAT is 120, PAT is 120, add back depreciation because it's a non-cash, add back R&D because it's a non-operating, add back interest because it's a non-operating, debtors you see the debtors have increased that means I'm selling goods on credit stock has increased that means I'm purchasing goods and uh, the creditor creditors have has have in uh, uh, creditors have increased okay so therefore that means I'm I'm purchasing goods on uh, uh, credit so that means I have uh, I'm, I'm making more money there uh, or cash there so therefore it is the positive creditor so so therefore if you see the changes in the decision regarding the debtors creditors and their stock will have a huge effect on the CFO so once you want to see CFO observe not just the CFO positive or negative but observe why is it CFO positive is it because of um, the collection is it because of postponing the creditor uh, payment or is it because of you are actually purchasing huge stock for the future? 
So therefore, in a, according to AS, AS, uh, AS3 in India, it says that you have to present the accounting, uh, the accounting for cash flow statement by showing CFO, CFI, CFF. But you can ask a question, is it what the companies do? Of course, let me take an example of uh, the Hindustan lever and show what are they doing. Hindustan Lever's cash flow statement for 31st March 2010. So they are doing an indirect method. You can see that. They are taking the profit, an adjustment for depreciation, uh, adjustment for interest, adjustment for dividend income, adjustments for interest, okay? And uh, then adjustment for working capital, receivables, inventories, and payables, and the tax paid. So most of the companies in India show the cash from operation in an indirect method and indirect method will answer okay so indirect method will answer so let me write down the indirect method will answer this question what will it show the indirect method so CFO can be determined by using direct method and direct method will say, okay, so direct method will answer this question or will show, okay, will show the operating receipts, okay, operating receipts and operating payments. Whereas the indirect method, indirect method will show or will answer, indirect method will show or will answer that why is profit why is profit not same as cash from operation and that is due to as we have seen it is not same as profit is not same as CFO because of non cash because of non operating and because of the credit transactions okay credit transaction so later on we'll see the relevance of CFO and why CFO is sometime more important than the cash from other activities. Thank you very much.